Hi from Venice Beach. Um, I want to talk to you about the epic fails of our New Year's resolutions. And you know the percentage of the amount of people that already failed by February 1st? Research has been done several times. Latest that I've seen is by Forbes magazine who were interviewing their readers. Uh, have you quit already? And it turns out by February 1st, 80% of us have already quit our New Year's resolutions. Well, that leads me to the question, why don't I set any New Year's resolution? Is it because of that 80%? No, not really. I know how to goal set. I've been covering it on this channel multiple times over, so I recommend that you uh, look to our other videos. But one thing is, is when I'm really committed about a goal, yes, I do really prepare. So I may not start my goal right away, because I need to prepare, because I may need to get some materials, maybe I need to reflect journal, whatever it is. But when I really want something, I'm not gonna wait until January 1st. I'm actually gonna start when I am prepared, when I have goal set, when I lit up my brain like a Christmas tree, my neural pathways lit it up like a Christmas tree, using NLP, using all the tools that I teach. So, what is one thing that I contribute as being one of these, one of the reasons why 80% of us fail is not just we don't know how to goal set, but it's, I think it has a lot to do with this January 1st thing. It doesn't sound to me like a person is truly passionate or in it for the long haul. And the only way that we can achieve our goals in the long haul is that we set the right goals, of course, the ones that increase our positive emotions, our engagement and flow feelings, positive relationships, meaning and purpose, um, achievement and accomplishment. And, you know, and, and, and especially um, in, this, in this pandemic going around, I think that the relationship piece is really important as well, that our goals don't harm our connections with others even further. Now, I think that once we, we do set goal that reach well-being, is that I think many of us are not aware that the process into which reaching our goal needs to be enjoying enjoyable needs to bring positive emotions and what we often do is we want to do things to reach a goal as quickly as possible but we hate to do that activity so i'll give you an example i had some hormonal issues things were going on i need to get my body back on track i'm aging and all that stuff i want to say crap but it's all that stuff anyway so i used to be a big gym rat six days a week in the gym lifting weights three times a week cardio five times a week um, I would be doing Feldenkrais, I would be doing even exercise on the beach here, I would be doing all those different things. And injury after injury, I hate doing it, I don't like the environment, don't like the energy. And so I, in terms of working out, in terms of cardio and also strength work, I decided to come up with my own routine right now. And so cardio, I actually do in VR, virtual reality, in an amazing game called Supernatural which is about music and dance movements or dance-like movements. I'm not a big dancer. Um, and you're projected all over the world doing it. And I love doing it, even some of my former students on it. So definitely check out GetSupernatural.com um, if you are in the U.S. or Canada. Um, and so I like doing that. I love doing it. I like showing up for it. Um, and so I'm more likely to actually do that than go to the gym. And I've been doing Supernatural for years consistently at this point. So um, how can you spice your goal up in terms of lighting up the brain with positive emotions so it becomes more attractive to do that? And second of all, how can you create a little bit more accountability? Doesn't mean that you need to have a workout buddy, although that could be a lot of fun for you. Um, could you find a person that you can send an email to, let's say weekly, um, to kind of bump up your accountability there? And, to sort of report if you've done it or not. Okay, so that was my little take about for the 80% of you that have already failed your New Year's resolutions.